Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure for us in another episode of the TVD Talk and also for the TVD Tennis Innovation Conference to have one of the great leaders of our sport with us, Mark Leslie. Hi, Mark. Hi, Fernando. Nice to be back. Uh, thank you. Thank you to be with us because TVD Talk and TVD Innovation Conference is about that, about innovation, about development, about transformation of our sport, and you are a truly innovator in our sport. Let me, let me introduce for our audience a little bit about you. He actually is the chairman and CEO of the Universal Tennis, and also he is a managing partner of Economic Partners and RHO Capital Partners. Uh, he was a former Harvard number one tennis player, uh, and also he was like a captain as well. Uh, he is member of the USTA Foundation Advisor Board and also the USTA Player Development Council. And also he was selected two times for the Danish Davis Cup team. It's a pleasure to have you with us uh, in our programs, uh, Mark. Well, thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Fernando. It's uh, great to be here with you. Uh, thank you. You, you. you deserve it. You, like I say, you're a truly innovator and an entrepreneur. We need a lot of people like you on 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 our sport. Let, let me ask you the first question because you did work the last years a lot and on universal tennis, UTR. What means for you, and you know, from the perspective of universal tennis and UTR rating, bring innovation to our sport? Yeah, well, thank you for that question. You know, when, when I sort of spent the last about 25 years here in Silicon Valley, sort of on the investing side, investing in the technology, startup companies and the like, I then spent about four or five years investing into sports at the interface of sort of media and technology and innovation. And I always wanted to do something in tennis, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's an industry that's a struggle to innovate. Uh, it's a highly fragmented industry. Um, it's not governed like a league and a central body like many others, you know, with seven governing bodies, with federations, uh, you know, different groups out there. So this whole notion of trying to figure out how to aggregate audiences together, how to bring innovation to the table, allow people to access that in an affordable way and then evolve has been very, very challenging. Um, so what we set out to do was to take this concept of a rating system. And, uh, and establish a rating system as a standard across the globe. And then with that being free, now being able to add you know, people onto that platform and then bring them more products and services. And we've spent now, you know, since I bought the business uh, almost three years ago, about three years ago, um, you know, we built out the most accurate rating in the world. We're giving that away for free to everybody who wants it across the globe. And now here come other products and services. So whether that's helping you organize an event as an organizer or helping you to make money as a teaching professional, uh, or whether that as a player is trying to connect yourself to other people to play with, it's about getting you onto a digital device, right? Uh, which ultimately is the basis for innovation. Technology is innovation. Uh, and then allowing you to have an experience that's valuable, engage you more and more, and then allow you, frankly, the freedom and flexibility of personalization. Uh, and so that's always been the vision since we sort of jumped into this. And, and you know, we're on a marathon. This is not a sprint. And uh, we've had uh, tremendous progress uh, over the last three years and just continue to scale and scale. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, and your purpose is aligned with the purpose of Winfield because Winfield, when he created tennis, he tried that everyone can play on parks, families, friends, relatives. Let me ask you how players can leverage with the universal tennis to improve the tennis experience. No, that's why I, I brought about, you know, what happened uh, with Winfield because Winfield try to be affordable for everyone. You are, you are doing the same, the same purpose, no? Yeah. So, so at the core of all of this is the simple notion the way play, tennis has been played and is played today is super local. You tend to play it in your little clique. Now that could be a tennis club, it could be a high school, it could be a couple of friends. And so why is that? Because you can't connect the people typically. You can't find other people. And if you do play events and tournaments, they tend to be age and gender based. So tennis has been designed from the onset to be around age and gender. 
And then when you think about that and take a step back, so well, why is that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I would have just as much enjoyment playing with a young girl, an old man, et cetera, if we're at the same level. So the whole notion of introducing level-based tennis, well, what do you need for level-based tennis? You need a rating that is blind to age and gender and demographics, right? And so now if we have the system, just like a golf index that says, hey, you're an 8.2 UTR and so am I, and so is this 14 year old girl over there or 70 year old man or whatever it may be, we can now connect you to have a good experience. So what we've done is that we've gone out and we've now tried to open up the world to say, hey, here you are, here's a mobile app. You can find people at your level. Oh, and by the way, we've also then introduced this concept in the club. So we help pros and clubs and colleges and high schools and even federations adopt level-based play uh, so that now they can connect uh, people onto this. And that enriches the ecosystem. It allows people to connect more. It allows now to create a monetary system as well, where people now suddenly can connect to people, small digital marketing databases, products, variety, personalization. And those are things that ultimately fuel. If you get personalization and choice and value to consumers, they'll lean in. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. We, we used to say that tennis is a bridge to communicate and create relationships with people. No? And that's uh, Universal Tennis UTR is a very good resource today. And let me, let me ask you about the industry, you know, the, the clubs, the academy, you know, the, which probably could be like the providers. How they can increase participation using Universal Tennis? Yeah. So when we originally jumped into this, we thought, hey, we just create a direct to consumer mobile app. We'll connect you to players around and you'll find them and you'll go play. What we discovered is what's well known to you is that it's really, really hard for most organizers and clubs and professionals to make a living in the game. Right. And so part of solving this notion of connecting people was we had to provide value in what we call business to business you know, yep. the organizers in the facility. Why? Because those local pros and those organizers, they know their clientele the best. So we can give them products. So an event management system, a tournament management system, a local digital database, where now they can put all their players onto that, use the rating to match them up and then create all different kinds of play and way to engage them. That suddenly allowed them A, to make money and B, to create something new that was engaging for their clientele. And that's what we've been doing. And we just keep rolling out new products now. So whether it be mobile apps, whether it be adult league, whether it be junior, whether it be flex league structures, all different kinds of things where you as an organizer can say, oh, I like that. I like that for my clientele, but I don't have to worry about that. And by the way, I'm not being told what to use either. All right. Which often happens in tennis. Yeah, and absolutely. Because it's a very good opportunity for clubs, owners and academy owners to create a digital club. You have the real club and you also have the digital club simultaneously. Let, let me ask you, because you're an innovator, you're an entrepreneur, creator, many, many things besides UTR ratings. Uh, which other areas of the sport, universal tennis, are currently creating new innovation on thinking ahead? Yeah, you know, we, we have continued to sort of just take this notion of the rating you know, making that better and better and better. We built this notion of an event management platform that now we're bringing into these different segments. So mm -hmm. schools, bring it into high schools, bring it into clubs. Um, you know, one huge area that, you know, as COVID hit that we've sort of innovated on over the last year is actually professional tennis. Uh, and, and, you know, we sort of sat here in, in, in April, May, like everybody did a year ago and sort of said, my God, here's COVID. Uh, and I sort of had this idea of saying, well, maybe we can do something in pro tennis. Well, we put on a pro event in Florida and, you know, brought in some big players, put it on tennis channel here in the United States, 133 million homes. And, and that sort of led us into, hey, is there a role for us to play to help this pathway for players, emerging players? And that resulted in launching a, a brand new tour that we launched January 1. We're going to do 185 events this year uh, globally in 15 countries, uh, 10,000 matches. We've created an entire tour from scratch uh, that involves all the codes, uh, integrity, the streaming and, you know, everything. Um, and uh, it's had tremendous feedback from the players. Uh, they love the matches. They love the monies. Uh, you know, we're financially funding the whole thing. So, a lot of the ambiguities about setting up these ITF events often is hard because you have to find sponsors. Well, in our case, 
we just fund the whole thing and we enable it. And uh, so that's been one area that's been fun and exciting. And I think we want, you know, we're going to keep going with that years ahead to support those players. Um, and we're doing similar things in other areas. Um, you know, in some cases we're working independently in other cases, we're working closely with federations, uh, you know, create their junior pathway, allow this to become a better experience, give them more local opportunities. Uh, but at the core of all of this, what we're trying to do is make this game more accessible, make it more affordable and make it more fun. You know, that's sort of our root mission. Um, and, uh, we're always open to new ideas and, and we love working with others to enable it because ultimately they know their clients the best. Yeah, absolutely. If you look back in the, these three years, how was the journey? You know, because of course you are coming from tennis, you, you, you were a Harvard, you were a professional player, Davis Cup player. How was that journey? Yeah, no, it, it's been a fascinating journey. You know, you, you always go down a path and, you know, you think it's going to go this way and sometimes it goes this way and that way. Um, I think in many ways uh, it's been a little bit different than I thought it would be, but in many ways, much more rewarding. Um, I think if I was to look back now and sit here three years ago and think we were going to be here today, would I be pleased and I would be happy? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think part of the nice thing about being an entrepreneur and being an innovator is that you can pivot quickly. Right. And I yep. think one of the things we did do in COVID was we pivoted very quickly. And so, whereas for many people, COVID was super hard because they were stuck in certain pathways and certain organizational structures, we pivoted quickly. We created a new tour. We've grown tremendously. You know, our organization is closing in on a hundred people. You know, we've, we've grown 400, 500% um, on all dimensions. So, I, I'm super pleased with what's transpired. Um, it's also hard work, you know, and I think doing anything and trying to get anything done in the tennis world is not easy. Um, you know, there's a lot of different opinions. There's a lot of different pockets. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting agendas, um, but we're committed to this and we want to change the game for the better. And, um, you know, we're a strong business now and we have strong partners. Uh, we've been fortunate to align ourselves with a lot of people who are motivated for positive change and uh, we're going to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. That's why you, you, you share a strong vision, a lot of passion, clear focus on what is next. And let me ask you the last, the last question. What is next? Which is the universal, the universal then is going for the future. We used to say in TBD, where will be your position in 10 years ahead? Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's why we create an analogy The TVD is like the back to the future, no? Let's yeah. go 10 years and yeah. be back today. No? Yeah. I, I think, you know, our vision is the same that's always been, which is if you got three, five, 10 years, what would we like to have happen? We'd love to have every tennis player on the planet, whether you're six years old or whether you're 65, to have a rating that's free that you can use to connect yourself with other people to play tennis. We will continue to build software and tools and solutions so that all the organizers of tennis, from the teaching pro to the club to the school, can use our system to make more money and engage more with their audiences. So our vision is simple. We've been transparent about it. We've told everybody about it. And we want to partner with as many aspects of tennis um, to deliver that so that ultimately we can help drive more economics through better choice and better value from consumers and organizers to lift the game. Uh, you know, we're under a lot of pressure in the game of tennis uh, on all dimensions um, with, you know, this whole changing dynamic of digital landscapes and other sports that it also is a necessity. Um, I think we have to evolve and we have to improve or this sport will continue to wither and die. Uh, and there are some alarming trends in tennis, um, you know, that I think we should be cognizant of that. And those aren't necessarily always being able to be addressed by some of the leaders in tennis um, because of their conflicts and because of their own pressures. Um, so fast forward, we're a technology company, we're a solutions provider. We want to give as many solutions to as many people across the globe as we possibly can. That's ambitious, it's bold, um, but we're three years in and we're going to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me ask you the, the last question because DVD It's bringing all the innovators, creators, leaders all together, same platform, first time on the history of tennis, innovators talking about how to bring in innovation in 24 hours, you know, the, which is we can do innovation. Even you have a technology platform, a company, innovation is everything, it can be in human development, organization, education, 
we need to put in tennis the innovation concept like a priority. What do you feel to be part of the, like innovator of TBD? What do I feel? Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I, I look, I, I think I listen, I, I commend you for what you're doing, Fernando. I commend the people that have great vision and, and, and interest and motivation. It's super, super hard, right, to innovate in this industry because even if you have great ideas, it's so hard to get escape velocity on those ideas. Uh, you know, part of what I'm trying to build is a platform where I can help people who yeah. actually also are innovators, right? If, if I can reach a large global audience and I can help these innovators that you're talking to tee up their offerings and their solutions to those audiences to say, hey, best ideas should rise and have opportunities. Very, very difficult to innovate now in tennis uh, and to get that sort of acceptance, cost prohibitive, and it's very difficult to create an audience. Um, so I'm super excited. I hope that I can help uh, going forward uh, with great ideas. And uh, you know, we're gonna keep engaging more and more people and bring more and more people together with us about bringing those ideas to market to help the ecosystem. Absolutely, you are doing, you are helping our sport because we need to change our paradigms. We can be very traditional like a sport, but taking advantage the new concepts, putting in our game to be a better sport. Thank you, Mark, for all the you and your team are doing for tennis, you know, it's a privilege to have some minutes with you and to share with our audience and also for the TVD attendees, which they can learn more about Universal Tennis and UTR. Well, very nice of you, Fernando, and thank you for everything you've done and um, happy to be a part of this, even a small part, and hopefully over time can look to collaborate with all of your innovators and friends as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mark.